Merry belated Christmas, everybody. Trevor here, and welcome to the last video of 2021. 2021 has been a pretty tough year, hasn't it? It wasn't as bad as last year, but it's still not as good due to the current pandemic going around. To finish off this year, I'm going to do a top 12 favorite Christmas movies video. I was originally going to do a top 10, but I've decided to make it 12 just to reflect on the 12 Days of Christmas song, which is also one of my favorite Christmas songs, by the way. Anyways, for this list, I'm only going to include those that are nostalgic to me. However, I will pick one from my teenage years, which I'll get to later. Also, this video may contain some unpopular opinions on certain flicks, so don't bash me for them. Now with that out of the way, let us begin this festive top 12. Number 12. Any story about the nativity. We all know the story about the nativity. You know, the story about the very first Christmas, the story about baby Jesus, and that he came to earth to be our Lord and Savior of this world. Examples of the nativity story include The Little Drummer Boy by Rankin Bass and Disney's Small One. Each one is a different retelling of the nativity story. The Little Drummer Boy is about a boy who hates humanity, but soon learns that there is good in the world, too. The small one is about a boy and his beloved donkey. There are other good nativity stories, too, but if I were to recommend one, it would be these two. The real reason why these are so low on the list is they are often overlooked by the public, so therefore... They don't have that much rewatchability like the Santa Claus stories, but that doesn't mean they are less important because, after all, the baby Jesus is the true meaning of Christmas, and you can't have Christmas without Christ. Number 11. A Dog Named Christmas This movie is about an autistic boy who rented an old Labrador retriever, but when they bonded throughout the movie, they became good friends and therefore he adopted the dog. This is number 11 for plenty of reasons. 1. It's quite underrated. 2. It should not be confused with the dog who saved Christmas, which is not only a ripoff of Home Alone, but also a crappy version of a dog named Christmas. In addition, I like the emotional bits in this scene including one scene at the beginning where the teenage boy cries after freeing a bird that he took care of, and the part of the movie where they play in the Arms of an Angel by Sarah McLachlan, and those are all the reasons why I think that this is better than The Dog Who Saved Christmas. Number 10, The Nutcracker Prince from 1990. When it comes to adaptations of The Nutcracker, this would have to be my most favorite one of them all. Unfortunately, I don't have this on VHS or DVD, but luckily I was able to watch it on television a couple of times back in my youth, as well as once on YouTube. The Nutcracker Prince was a Canadian animated film released in 1990 by Cineplex Odeon Films in Canada and Warner Brothers in the US. It is about a girl named Clara who falls in love with a Nutcracker Prince gifted by her uncle Drosselmeyer. And then one night, she was shrunk by magic and was encountered by the evil Mouse King and his army of mice, but was eventually saved by the Nutcracker Prince and the other dolls, who also came to life by Drosselmeyer's spirit. One interesting thing about this movie is that when Uncle Drosselmeyer tells Clara the story about the Nutcracker Prince, the scene transitions from beautiful animation to a more cartoony style, which I guess does make sense since it is a retelling of the Nutcracker. If you watch the movie, you'll see what I mean. It also features the backstory of the Mouse King and his mother, the Mouse Queen, who got killed during the story by a fallen statue, and because of that, his son became the Mouse King and swore vengeance on Hans, while Drosselmeyer was exiled by the ungrateful king. My favorite scene, besides the battles against the Mouse King, would have to be the dance between Clara and the Nutcracker during the climax because of the beautiful music and special effects they played. But soon after that, when Clara says that she wants to go home, her reluctance turns all the dolls back into lifeless toys, and that's when the Mouse King shows up for one final battle. Earlier in the story, Drosselmeyer explains that only Clara will break the curse to turn Hans back into a normal human boy, so Clara basically defeats the dying Mouse King by making him fall off the edge and into the water. And when Clara woke up, the Nutcracker was gone, so she rushed to her uncle's workshop to find that his nephew Hans was there. 
though whether this was all a dream or reality is still a mystery. In my opinion, this is the best animated adaptation of The Nutcracker, and I highly recommend it to anyone who is a fan of the ballet and orchestra. Though, I heard this film was a commercial failure, which was very unfortunate because like A Dog Names Christmas, this one is also quite underrated, and deserves more love and attention, so that's why it's number 10. Number 9, March of the Wooden Soldiers. This is the original Babes in Toyland did back in 1934. Strangely, this adaptation had alternative titles including March of the Wooden Soldiers, as you can see here. It is also based on the popular 1903 operetta by Victor Herbert. It stars the famous comic duo Laurel and Hardy as Stanny Dumb and Ollie D, the comic relief characters of this film. And in this film, they work together to help save Bo Peep from the evil hands of Silas Barnaby, the meanest and most hated man in Toyland. During the climax, they both saved the day when they activated the giant wooden soldiers that they built earlier and started a war against Barnaby and his army of bogeymen. I was first introduced to this on VHS back when I was a very young lad, and for the most part, I loved it as a kid. It is what introduced me to Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy in the first place. In fact, their respective characters were some of my favorite ones in this version because they are so funny. Stanny Dumb is the silly one, while Ollie D was the smart one. One strange thing about this version of Babes in Toyland is that it had a mouse character that strongly resembles Mickey Mouse. Copyright infringement, anyone? Oh, and from what I've researched, the mouse character was played by a live monkey in a costume. And I thought it was just a puppet. The movie also had a few frightening moments, particularly with the bogeymen, who were described by Ollie D as half human, and half animal. There are a lot of different adaptations of Babes in Toyland, but this one in my opinion is not only the best one, but the most nostalgic for its wonderful acting, singing, writing, humor, etc. And if you're a classic Christmas fan, I would definitely recommend this one to your family. Number 8. Rudolph the Movie by Good Times Entertainment We all know the story of Rudolph, the one who was teased for his glowing red nose, and eventually saved Christmas during a stormy winter night. No offense to the people who grew up with the original rankin Bass version or the 1940s cartoon, but I actually prefer this one in terms of certain aspects. First of all, I love the voice acting, especially John Goodman's performance as Santa because not only he suits the role, but Good Times made him kind and caring unlike his rankin Bass counterpart who basically says, well, let's hope he outgrows his glowing nose so that he can pull the sleigh in the future. What a jerk! Another reason why I like this version better is because, with the designs of the reindeer and the elves, at least you can tell who is who, unlike in other adaptations. Thirdly, when it comes to the main love interest, I think Zoe is a better character than Clarice because not only she has more screen time, but also more character development. I mean, she's not perfect but she's still a sweet and lovable doe. In addition, I thought Whoopi Goldberg was a great Stormella. I think she's better than the abominable snow monster from the original because I thought the snow monster himself was too frightening for little kids. And furthermore, while I did enjoy the songs from the original rankin Bass version, but I personally don't mind the songs in this one because they're pretty memorable in my opinion. My most favorite witch had to be Show Me the Light because it's such a beautiful love song and it reflects on the relationship between Rudolph and Zoe, though it's kind of weird seeing them lip sync the lyrics during the movie. Fun fact, there's an extended version of this song that's only on CD, and in my opinion, I think the extended version of Show Me the Light is better than the shortened version used in the film. But this movie is not without its flaws. For instance, after Rudolph rescues Stormella from falling off a cliff, Slyly the Fox urges her to grant Rudolph one wish, which are the rules, for some reason. Seriously though, where did this plot point come from? In fact, why can't Stormella just be nice herself instead of Rudolph wishing it? This scene could have been altered entirely if Rudolph says, We'll go home right now if you promise to be nice from now on. As for the storm part, I think it's fine if it had to take its natural course, otherwise we wouldn't be able to be more accurate to the original climax. 
I know it sounds stupid in this case, but it's true. Another thing I don't like about Rudolph the movie, and yes, I'm still going to call it that from now on, is that Rudolph sounds exactly like his original Rankin Fast counterpart. Don't get me wrong, Kathleen Barr is an excellent Rudolph, but only in the Island of Misfit Toys movie, since that is a sequel to the original 1964 stop motion film. Why couldn't they just hire Cam Clark as the main character in this version? That way, he would sound not only different from Kathleen Barr, but also to make him sound older and mature. The funny thing is, this was released in theaters, and it bombed. If that's the case, why couldn't they just release it straight to video and DVD instead? Besides, the animation itself was alright for the most part, but could have been a lot worse too. And because of the movie's flaws, I'm going to give this movie a 7.5 out of 10 stars. It may not be a perfect adaptation of Rudolph, but I still love it better than the original because I thought the Rankin Bass version was way too mean spirited and kind of frightening at times. Besides, I've seen far worse Christmas films by Good Times and Golden Films. Number 7. The Disney Versions of A Christmas Carol The Christmas Carol was a Christmas classic novel written by Charles Dickens back in the 19th century, who you may also remember him as the author of other classics such as Oliver Twist. When it comes to movie adaptations, there are plenty of good ones, but three of them are my most favorite versions of all time, and those would be the three Disney ones. These include Mickey's Christmas Carol, The Muppet Christmas Carol, and the motion capture remake with Jim Carrey as the main character. To be honest, I like all three of these. I don't care which one is better than the other. They're all equally good. In Mickey's Christmas Carol, Scrooge McDuck plays as Ebenezer Scrooge, while Mickey himself stars as Bob Cratchit. I even thought it was interesting that Goofy was Jacob Marley, Jimmy Cricket as the Ghost of Christmas Past, Willie the Giant as the Ghost of Christmas Present, and Pete as the Ghost of Christmas Future. Also, I think Alan Young is the best voice actor for Scrooge McDuck because he was a part of my childhood when it comes to Disney. The new voice is good too, but no one can be better than Alan Young. Now let's move on to The Muppet Christmas Carol, which is considered one of the better versions of the classic tale. In this one, Michael Caine plays as Scrooge, which I thought was a decent performance by him. I also enjoyed the Muppet roles in this, including Kermit as Bob Cratchit, Gonzo as Charles Dickens, and Rizzo as himself. Oh, and not to mention the wonderful and memorable songs. My most favorite one had to be When Love Is Gone, sung by Belle. I mean, it's such an emotional song. It makes me cry every time I watch this scene and hear it. In fact, it's so sad and emotional that it made Rizzo cry at the end of it. And do you know what the worst part of it is? This scene was cut out in later releases because they thought it was too sad. Are you kidding me? This scene is kind of important. Scratch that. Very important. Because it explores the sad relationship between Scrooge and Belle. It's called character building. And last but not least, the 2009 motion capture version by Image Movers Digital. This movie stars Jim Carrey as the main character. And as a fan of Jim Carrey myself, I can't help but add this on the list. Although this one is a little more accurate to the original novel in terms of certain aspects, but I would only recommend it to anyone who is not a little kid. I mean, it's rated PG for a very good reason. It's got a lot of scary elements like the Jacob Marley ghost as a doorknob. At first, I was expecting him to shout Scrooge in a ghostly manner like most adaptations, but instead, we get a jump scare which thankfully I covered my eyes at the time I saw this in theaters. I sort of knew that was going to happen anyway. Another example of a scary element was the ghost of Christmas yet to come as a shadow. There were parts that really made me jump, like when it comes out of the ground out of nowhere, and the part where he finally shows up driving the horse and carriage while chasing after Scrooge. But it's got some lighthearted moments like, with the ghost of Christmas present and the very end where Scrooge reforms and starts acting nice on Christmas Day, just like in the book. I know some people don't like the motion capture, but I personally don't mind it because it makes the movie look more realistic and less cartoony. I may not have seen all the existing adaptations of A Christmas Carol like the one with George C. Scott as Scrooge, 
But these are the three Disney ones I will definitely add to the list because they are some of the best ones in my opinion. Number six, Home Alone. Ah yes, Home Alone. One of the best Christmas movies to ever come out in cinemas. Like The Nutcracker Prince, this also came out in 1990. It is about an eight-year-old troublemaking boy named Kevin who has left home alone by mistake and has to protect his home from two burglars known as the Wet Bandits. When it comes to the Home Alone franchise, I consider this not only a classic, but the absolute best one because I thought the second one was okay for the most part, though it does recycle elements from its predecessor, which is why I like the first Home Alone movie better. Back on topic, what made Home Alone so special and groundbreaking is its original story. I even love the characters, the music, the setting, and the humor. Trust me, my family and I cracked up when we saw the bandits get tortured by the painful traps. But unfortunately, the reason it's number 6 is because it's one of those many movies that's been ripped off to death. I'm looking at you, Dog Who Say Christmas! And personally, I would recommend the first two since those star Macaulay Culkin. The others are just reboots. And yeah, I heard that Home Sweet Home Alone was god-awful. And I'm pretty sure it's the absolute worst one of them all. Number 5. Santa Claus is coming to town. When it comes to stop-motion Christmas specials by Rankin Bass, this one is my most favorite one of them all for a number of reasons I'm about to explain. First of all, I thought the casting choices were excellent, including Mickey Rooney as Kris Kringle and Fred Astaire as the narrator. One of my favorite characters was the Winter Warlock, who held Chris and his penguin sidekick hostage during their second journey, but Chris reforms the character by giving him a toy train, which melts his icy appearance, and that brings me to my next point. I thought all the songs in this movie are catchy and memorable, especially the one where Chris sings, put one foot in front of the other, I think that's what it's called. In addition, the story itself was very well written in my opinion, because they explain Santa's origin story, and there are important plot elements that were very well explained, such as the stockings, the Christmas tree, and how Santa got his flying reindeer in the first place. But this isn't Mickey Rooney's only appearance as Santa Claus. There are other specials too where he reprised his role as the character, but for this list, I'm only picking one of them, and this is it. Number 4. Frosty the Snowman Another one of my favorite Rankin Bass specials. This stars Jimmy Durante as the narrator, and Frosty was played by the late Jackie Vernon. This is also one of the many Rankin Bass cartoons I used to watch all the time when I was little, along with Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which I've already mentioned earlier. In this story, Frosty came to life because some kids found a magician's magic hat and put it on his head, but unfortunately, Professor Hinkle, the magician, wanted his hat back and didn't care that Frosty came to life because of it. Thankfully, the rabbit brought back the hat to Frosty so he can have a second chance to live. Now Frosty's new mission was to go to the North Pole before he melts, so the kids were happy to help him get a train to there. First of all, not only that the casting was great, but I also enjoyed the traditional Frosty the Snowman song sung by Jimmy Durante, the TV quality animation at the time, the characters themselves, and the fun story. My least favorite scene would have to be Frosty being locked inside a greenhouse by Professor Hinkle so that Frosty could melt and that he would get his magic hat back. And I'll admit, it was sad to see Frosty melt in this scene, but thankfully, Santa came to the rescue and assured Karen that Frosty was made of Christmas snow, which doesn't melt away. So, Santa opened the greenhouse door and rebuilt Frosty outside by magic. He even told Professor Hinkle that if he wrote an apology letter, he would give him a new hat, which he did. In conclusion, this was a great animated special, and definitely one of Rankin Bass's finest. Number 3, The Grinch. There are three different adaptations of The Grinch, the original by Chuck Jones, the live-action one from the year 2000, and the 2018 CGI remake by Illumination. Honestly, I think they're all great on their own, but my most favorite one of them all would have to be the live-action adaptation with Jim Carrey. First of all, I love Jim Carrey as the Grinch because he's hilarious. In fact, I consider him my all-time favorite actor. He even does a lot of great different expressions for the Grinch. 
Secondly, I like the props and sets they used in the film, including the rocket sleigh during the climax. Sure, it was gimmicky and stupid, but it's enjoyably stupid and fun at the same time. I especially like the Where Are You Christmas song by Faith Hill. I mean, it's such a beautiful song. Oh, and I also enjoy the movie's version of You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, because it's so funny. It may not be as memorable as the original, but it's still fun to listen to. However, there are a few things I don't like about the movie, including the unnecessary gross-out humor, as well as the fact that the movie itself was production hell. For example, according to Fun Fact Films on YouTube, the Grinch makeup was agonizing to Jim Carrey as it took 8.5 hours for him to get ready. Not to mention that the yellow in his eyes irritated him so much that he couldn't take it anymore. If you want to learn more on this, link will be provided in the description below. While I do feel bad for Jim Carrey's filming experience during the making of this film, but that doesn't stop me from enjoying the 2000 adaptation not only for his performance, but also for the writing for mostly staying true to the original story, for the most part. So therefore, I give this movie an 8 out of 10 stars. Number 2. The Polar Express This movie is about a boy who discovers a magical train that takes children all the way up to the North Pole to meet Santa Claus. Back in 2004, there were three choices of movie for me and my dad to see in theaters. One was The Polar Express, the second one was The Incredibles by Pixar, and the other one was the Spongebob Squarepants movie by Nickelodeon. And out of all of them, I chose The Polar Express because, you know, I'm a train fanatic. I don't care what the critics say about this, I love this movie from the bottom of my heart for a number of reasons. 1. I know some people find the graphics to be a bit creepy, but for me, I thought this movie had some of the best motion capture I've ever seen because it looks so realistic. I mean, it's far better than Food Fight. 2. It has a nice message about believing. Even though I don't really believe in Santa myself, but at least I believe in the baby Jesus, but that has nothing to do with this movie. 3. I thought Tom Hanks does a great job with some of the characters, including the conductor himself. And 4. The songs are very memorable, including the traditional Believe song during the ending credits, as well as the Hot Chocolate song in the middle of the movie. In addition, the Polar Express has some of my favorite scenes, including the Glacier Gulch scene, which I thought was pretty fun and exciting. And I also like the scene after that where the train slips on ice. Imagine if that happened to Gordon or Henry and Thomas and Friends. If there's one thing I don't like about the Polar Express, it would have to be the fact that most of the characters, including the hero boy, have no names. I also wish that the know-it-all kid had a name too, but for the sake of argument, I'm going to call him Mandark from now on, since he shares the same exact voice actor as the other character from Dexter's Laboratory. But aside from that, I give this movie a 9 out of 10 stars. I'm so glad I got to see this in theaters. It was a lot of fun. Now before I get to my number one pick, here are a bunch of honorable mentions. A Year Without a Santa Claus. As much as I love this special in terms of the Miser Brothers, but I only want to pick at least one Mickey Rooney role, and that would be Santa Claus is Coming to Town. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I think this movie is great, but I'm not that crazy about Halloween related stuff these days. Maybe I'll add this to a top 5 Halloween films video of next year. A Christmas Story It's alright. Sure it has its funny moments, but I'm not as crazy about it as the other Christmas comedies. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation As funny as this movie is, it does have some stupid moments like the skinny dipping sequence which I thought was pretty pointless. And besides, it's PG-13. And I want this list to be mainly a mix of G and PG, just to make this video more family friendly. Fred Claus. Again, it's alright, though it's kind of weird too, especially the fact that Santa has a wife who looks quite young to be Mrs. Claus. It's a Wonderful Life. To be honest, I haven't seen it, so that's why it didn't make it. Klaus. Even though I love this movie, and I wish it beat Toy Story 4 at the Oscars, but it got beat up by Santa Claus is Coming to Town because I want this video to be mainly about stuff from my childhood. 
And my number one most favorite Christmas movie of all time is Elf. I don't know about you guys, but I think Elf is great. The humor cracks me up every time. The characters are likable, including Buddy himself. A great original story, wonderful casting, nice North Pole setting with occasional stop motion, and best of all, like other Christmas movies, it actually has charm. This movie is about a human who was raised by elves, and one day, he decides to go on a journey to New York City to find his real father. Normally, I think Will Ferrell comedies are stupid and sometimes not funny, but this is one of the only few exceptions, because not only Will Ferrell was very funny as Buddy, but he had some charm to the character. Between you and me, I bet he had fun with this role. If I had to pick a favorite scene, mine would be the part where Buddy redecorates the toy store to make it look like the North Pole. I especially like the part where he builds New York City out of Legos, because I used to be a fan of those when I was younger. There are other funny scenes I like too, but this one's my most favorite of them all because it's so festive. Oh, and one more thing. That raccoon scene made me jump when I first saw it in theaters. Overall, this one is definitely a true classic. I give it a 10 out of 10 stars. And I highly recommend it to anyone who is a huge fan of Christmas family comedies. Now let me know in the comments section on which Christmas movies are your favorite. Do you agree with my list, or do you have your own personal preference? Also, sorry this took so long to make. I just had to perfect the script and editing. I'm a perfectionist, you know. And once again, this will be my very last video of 2021 because after this, I need a break. Here's hoping 2022 will be better, which I doubt because of the current situation with the coronavirus. And I'm sure some of you guys are asking me if I'm going to do a top 10 or top 12 worst Christmas movies video. Well, not this year because I still need to do some research on bad Christmas movies first. Maybe I'll do it next Christmas in 2022. So anyways, this is Trevor Davis saying, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.